Hello, boys and girls. We've got Lucy the Ladybug here with us for our nonfiction selection today. Uh, let me get that for you, Mrs. Neve. Oh, thank you. She's wonderful. She's such a good helper. Well, ladybugs are known for that, you know. Oh, here we are, Mrs. Neve. It's called What's Inside? Insects. Ooh. Now, Mrs. Neve, what do they mean by what's inside? Is it what's inside the book? Let's find out. I'll just wait over here. Thank you, Lucy. She's a good listener, too. And it always helps the teacher. All right, let's find out what they mean by what's inside. Ah, we've got the beetle here. And here they've got a picture of a beetle on the outside. And here on this side, it looks like they've peeled back the insect's skin, and you could see inside of the insect. It is a nonfiction book. We're going to have true facts about insects. And what's going to be fun is they're going to, we're going to hear about some different kinds of insects. Remember, there's like over 900,000 different kinds of insects in the world, and those are just the ones we know about. Yeah, there's lots. Let's find out about the beetles. This is a snout beetle. It is called this because of its big, funny nose, or snout. Its jaws are at the end of it, and it uses them to eat plants. So, interesting. So, the jaws are going to be over here. Here are the beetle's eyes, and they've got lines pointing right here. You've got the beetle's eyes. Claws help the beetle cling to branches and grass and leaves. So, there's your claws. I'll get it so you can see it. The claws are right there at the end of the feet. A suit of strong, hard armor, like a shell, covers the beetle's body. So the outside shell of the body is strong to protect the insides of the body. Here are the beetle's antenna. There you go. Now, what's inside? Inside the beetle's hard shell, its body is soft. All parts of the body need blood to bring food and take away waste. Oh, Look, it's got blood vessels, just like you have blood vessels, of course, to bring blood to the different parts of the body. A beetle's heart is a long tube. From it, blood goes to all parts of the body. So, you know what, you remember what your heart is shaped like. It doesn't look anything like a valentine heart. It's more like, kind of like your fist. Look at the beetle's heart. It's a long tube. That's its heart. Interesting. And then it says, this is the beetle's brain, that little purple spot there. Hmm, kind of a small brain, but it is a small animal. There you go. So now you know some facts about beetles. By the way, that hard shell on the outside, they call that the exoskeleton. Yes, insects have their skeleton on the outside. We have ours on the inside. Let's see, what, what kind of insect will we hear about next? Ooh, the honeybee. This honeybee lives in a hive with many other bees. It feeds on pollen and nectar, which it collects from flowers. Both pollen and nectar are stored inside the hive, where the nectar is made into honey. Okay, let's look at the outside of your honeybee. It says, black and yellow stripes warm, warn birds and other animals that bees have a poisonous sting. So... They have that built-in warning there that God gave them. The bee sucks up sweet nectar with its long tongue. So, hmm, just like the butterfly has a long tongue. The honeybee's body is covered with hair. Pollen sticks to the hairs as the bee pushes into the center of the flower. So you can see it does look hairy, doesn't it? And that's what the pollen's going to stick to. Yeah, we learned about that when we were talking about flowers. What's inside? It's like they peeled back the paper on our book or peeled back the skin of the bee. Ooh, this is pointing down here to this green part, and it says, Poison for the bee's stinger is made here. It is the poison that makes the sting hurt. So that's where it's made right there in the tail section. Now this spot, spot right here, it says, This is the bee's honey stomach. It stores the nectar here until it takes it back to the hive. Hmm, honey stomach. Interesting. 
Now, this part here, it's the end part of that green part here. I'll tilt that so you can see it better. That This is the bee's stinger. That's the part we don't like. It only stings once and dies soon after. Hmm. So once the bee stings something, it's done. And here they're pointing to this part right here. It says, the honeybee uses the hairs on its back legs to comb the pollen into this bag. Okay, so that's the bag where the pollen's going to go. Interesting. On the next page, we have our old friend, Mr. Caterpillar, right? Oh, he should be here. Caterpillar. Like all insects, this caterpillar hatched out of an egg. Now it lives, lives on leaves and spends most of its time eating. It is growing fast. Soon it will begin to change into a butterfly. So, of course, the caterpillar, remember, it's stage two in the butterfly life cycle. And it has uh, arrows pointing to these yellow, excuse me, black little dots there. And it says the caterpillar breathes through these holes along its sides. They are called spiracles. Hmm, interesting. So it's kind of like your nostrils on your nose. There's the caterpillar's breathing holes there. Um, up here it says, pointing to these long spiky things, Birds leave this caterpillar alone. Its bright colors and tentacles trick them into thinking it's poisonous. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's another defensive mechanism God gave this caterpillar. And now we've got air, an arrow pointing to this thing right here. It says, the caterpillar holds food with its front three pairs of legs. The other legs are for walking and holding onto leaves. So these are the ones that it holds its food with. The ones back here are for walking. What's inside? Let's look down here. We've peeled back the caterpillar skin. It says, as it grows, a caterpillar gets too big for its skin. First, a new larger skin grows underneath, and then the old skin splits, and the caterpillar crawls out and leaves it behind. We learned about that. So this is the new skin that is forming underneath the old skin. Let's look at this side. They've got a line pointing to this thing right here, this orange thing. And it says, this is the caterpillar's food tube. It is very big because the caterpillar eats so much. So there you can see, there's the food tube where the food is going to go into. And then we've got uh, a line pointing to this blue part. And it says, nerves from here spread all over its body so that the caterpillar can feel things around it. Hmm. So that's part of the caterpillar's nervous system there. You have one too. All righty, on to the next insect. Ah, uh, a fly went by, right? Fly. <laughs> Have you ever want, wanted to walk on the ceiling like a fly? <laughs> you would have to have a fly's sticky feet to do so. Many people kill flies because they spread germs. They do. Flies carry lots of germs. You don't want them around. Uh, the, and here we are looking at the fly's eyes right here, these two big spots. And it says the fly's eyes are made up of hundreds of tiny lenses. Hmm. And then we've got an arrow pointing to this part of the fly's body. It says, flies sunbathe to keep their bodies warm. These bristly hairs help take in the heat. So you can see like the bee has hairs on it. Our fly has hairs on it too. But their hairs are to help keep the fly warm, to help take in heat. Uh, over here, we're pointing to the feet here at the very end, and it says, sticky pads and claws allow the fly to walk upside down, even on very smooth surfaces. So those sticky pads and claws are what help the fly to walk on a ceiling. And then we've got a uh, line pointing to the wings, and it says, when flies buzz, the noise is made by their wings flapping very fast. Hmm, interesting, we hear that little 
that's the wings. What's inside? We've peeled it back. We've got a line pointing to right here. Let's read what it says. The fly breathes in and out through holes in its sides called spiracles. The same thing that we saw in the caterpillar, right? So there it is. The hole's there, and this must be where the air travels in. And this arrow now is pointing to this blue section here. Let's read about it. These are the fly's air sacs. They carry air to all parts of the body. Very good. And then we've got an arrow pointing down here to the bottom of the feet once again, and it says this fly, like some other insects, can taste with its feet. Remember, we learned about that with the butterfly. What insect will they tell us about next? Ooh, the cricket. This bush cricket lives in rough, grassy places. It comes out in the evening and eats plants. If it senses danger, it will quickly hop away. So it comes out in the evening. Interesting. Um, now we've got an arrow pointing down to the leg here, and it says, this cricket is green, just like grass, which helps it hide from birds that would like to eat it. Camouflage. Now we've got a line pointing to these long stick-like things going up, and it says, long antenna tell the cricket that th what the things around it feel and smell like. So those antenna have an important job to do. I guess that's why they're some kind, sometimes called feelers, because they feel and smell with them. All right, now we've got a line pointing to these this long leg here, and it says, crickets use their long back legs to leap away from danger. Mm -hmm. They're good leapers or jumpers. And here this line is pointing to this leg over here, and it says, crickets have ears on their front legs. Interesting. So they have ears on their legs. Our ears are on our heads. I think I like our arrangement better, but this must work for the cricket, right? Okay, what's inside? Ah, we've got a line pointing down to this reddish thing here, and it says, this strong muscle straightens the back leg as the cricket leaps. Ah, you would expect it to have strong muscles there. They have muscles just like you do. Make those legs strong. And now we are pointing to this, yeah, see if you can see it there, this yellow thing inside the leg. And it says, strong cords in the legs called tendons help the cricket leap a long way. So they've got tendons in their legs. You've got tendons in your body too. And now we're pointing to this pinkish looking part here. Let's find out about that. These are the ovaries. They produce eggs from which baby crickets will grow. Of course, they're insects. They're going to lay eggs, go through the life cycle. And then down here, we've got an arrow pointing to, again, this reddish pinkish thing here. And it says, this muscle is used to bend the leg back up again. So these different parts of the muscles do different things. Wow. What's next? Oh, Lucy's going to like this. The ladybug, yeah. Ladybugs are a kind of beetle. They live in forests, fields, parks, and gardens. Gardeners like ladybugs because they eat the aphids. Aphids are small insects that eat plants. And so the ladybug is definitely the gardener's friend. Now, not all ladybugs have spots like this one. Some have stripes. Hmm. And here we're pointing to the red area here, and it says, ladybugs are brightly colored to warn birds and other animals that they are bad to eat. Ladybugs taste bad to birds. So the birds see that bright red and they're gonna stay away. Um, now we're pointing to another red section here uh, on the wing, it says, this ladybug's hard back is really a pair of wings. They make a strong shield to keep the ladybug safe. And we talked about that uh, the other day, 
that they actually have two sets of wings. This hard set of wings protects the delicate wings underneath that the ladybug flies with. What's inside? Underneath the ladybug's hard back, there are lots of nerves, and the, they're pointing to these little blue things, probably hard to see, right inside the leg there. The nerves help the ladybug feel things around it. And then we're pointing to this purple thing here, and it says, this is the ladybug's brain. Remember, the brain is what you think with. Um, down here, we've got arrows pointing to more of those blue things inside the leg, more nerves, and it says, nerves go all the way down the ladybug's legs. Others go to the tips of its antenna. So the nerves are important to help the ladybug feel things around it. And here we're pointing to some more nerves over here, and it says these nerves are like telephone wires. They carry messages around the body. So the brain sends messages through the nerves, and messages like move that leg, and the leg will move. Up here it says when a ladybug wants to fly, its hard front wings swing out to the sides. You can see it right there. Those are the hard front wings. The hard wings do not flap, but they help lift the ladybug into the air. And then they colored the delicate wings gray, and those are the wings the ladybug actually flies with. Pretty cool, huh? And next we have the butterfly. The butterfly is this, excuse me, this butterfly is called a lime swallowtail. It's lovely. It flits from flower to flower, sipping the nectar. Its wings are brightly colored, so birds peck at them instead of the butterfly's head and body. Ooh, that's an interesting bit of information. Now here we've got a line to the, oh, you know that, the proboscis. There it is, all curled up in this picture. It says, when the butterfly feeds, it uncurls this long tube and uses it like a straw to suck up the flower's sweet nectar. We know about the proboscis, yeah. Now we've got a, point, a line pointing to the, one of the feet here, and it says, butterflies taste with their feet. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a line pointing to the wing up here, and it says, when the butterfly is resting, it folds its wings above its back. So here they're folded up above the back of the butterfly. So we know this butterfly is resting. What's inside the butterfly? Let's see, we've got a line pointing to this, these orange lines there. And it says, these supports are like bones. They keep the wings spread out. So just like your bones support you and hold you up, these orange things support the wings. They're not going to be as strong and heavy as your bones are, of course. Now we've got a line pointing down to the antenna. It says the antenna help butterflies smell flowers. Hmm. So they've got their sense of smell in the antenna there. We have ours in our nose, don't we? Okay, now we've got a line pointing to this blue squiggly thing here. Let's find out about that. Saliva is made here. Saliva is like, you know, it's, your saliva is the spit inside of your mouth. That's saliva. Saliva is made here and mixed with the food to make it easier to swallow. Hmm. Like our saliva. Huh. And here we've got a line pointing to this orange part here. And it says, this is the butterfly's stomach where food is digested. So here you go, butterfly's stomach right there. All right. On to the next insect. It's called the stick insect. Hmm. It does kind of look like a funny stick there, doesn't it? If you saw this spiny stick insect on a tree, you might think it was just a dried up leaf. A stick insect moves slowly and sways as it walks, so that it looks like a part of the tree moving in the wind. The insect cannot fly from danger, but has other ways of defending itself. Of course, that camouflage that it just talked about. 
Now our line this time is pointing down to these little tiny, let's see, excuse me, I thought it was pointing to these little black dots here, but it's pointing actually to this curved section here, this whole section. And it says, the stick insect curls its body over its back to look like a scorpion with a stinging tail. Any enemy who does who sees it will keep far away. Oh yeah, it does look like a scorpion, doesn't it? The scorpion's tail. That was a good defense God gave it. Its legs look like dry leaves. Indeed they do. And here we're pointing to the body and it says, the body is brownish yellow. Birds and lizards cannot see the stick insect among the twigs and leaves of the tree. Oh yes, that's gonna have, uh, be a good color for camouflage. What's inside? Let's see, right here our line is pointing to that section right there and it says the eggs come out here. So when our stick insect lays its eggs, you know it's gonna be stage one of the life cycle, that's where the eggs come out. Now we've got another line pointing to this purplish thing right here and it says in female stick insects, ovaries produce the eggs. The eggs travel down to the opening at the end of the tail, which oh, we just looked at. So here's where they travel through here, and then they come out there. Now, this line is pointing to these red things right there, and it says these muscles bunch up to bend its body around. So it uses these muscles to make that uh, part of it look, move back and forth to look like the scorpion tail. Yeah. Pretty cool. And that is the end. It's amazing, isn't it? I especially like the part about the ladybug, Mrs. Neve. Yeah, it was pretty cool, wasn't it? And ladybugs are great helper insects. They are. Well, boys and girls, thanks for being good listeners. And Lucy, thanks for your help. Uh, she not only helps in the garden with the eating all those aphids, she helps us with the books too. You be a good helper, just like Lucy, okay? Help mom out. Mother's Day's coming. <laughs>